There we go. Oh, hey everyone, and welcome aboard. I'll be your Captain Hillian today, or tonight, along with... Vaisal Lieutenant Rakir, at your service. And... <clears throat> Gunnery mate, Rom. And, uh, yeah, today... Yeah, yesterday I did say that we probably wouldn't do a, <coughs> a multiplayer thing or so, but... Uh, I think I figured out the multi-track audio thing, so that is why we're doing a test stream. Since, uh, well, might as well have some fun with it. Uh, the thing I had before, or uh, the, the, the thing that is kind of the problem with, uh, the str with OBS on this is that OBS only allows one track, the audio track, to be uh, streamed at once. So I just had a... <laughs> I was being an idiot until I figured out, oh, I can just set this, I can just tag everything to play the audio on audio track one. And then I can put all the other, then I can put everything on individual audio tracks for the recording. So the game audio is going to audio track two, the mic is going to three, and Discord audio is going to four. So in the recording after this, I should be left with a file that has four audio tracks, everything, and then all three separate. <clears throat> And yeah, just for the since we're doing a test, I might as well play something that we haven't streamed or we aren't streaming on the side. And uh, yeah, I decided on Dungeons and Dragons Online since I've been playing that again lately. It's yeah. it's a game that's nearing twenty years old or so. Oh bloody heck! <laughs> also, is it there's supposed to be sound here? Uh, the track just ends after a long time. All right. Anyway. Uh, for contacts, Dungeons & Dragons Online is, well, obviously an online, an MMO, an MMO based on the Dungeons & Dragons uh, franchise, the 3.5 uh, edition, to be exact. And, yeah, that plays a bit differently than the 4th uh, edition, but a bit somewhat similar to 5th edition. Um, <clears throat> either way... Uh, yeah, let's just go make a character. We'll be going with a ranger, since rangers are very strong. Also, something I like is that each of these classes that gives you a solo ability uh, score. So good, very good tank. <laughs> Paladins are basically the tanks, since they can wear the heaviest armor along with fighters. But they can also self-heal somewhat and buff. Uh, monks are also very good. In spells, we get less capable of, uh, except for the cleric. Yes, are very good. Sorcerer, wizards, and then the favorite soul is set as good. Druid is also set as good because they can tank as well and heal. And hello there, pizza lover. How are you doing today? You're doing well here? Hello, pizza lover. And let's hello. see. Then we have specialists like the ranger. Then the rogue, who is challenging, and the bard, who is also challenging. Okay. I am somewhat tempted to, to make a bard. Is, okay. is there supposed to be sound when you click on anything here? Nope. Alright, so it... It's just a damn is silent a... game. Yeah, it, just, it doesn't do the clicking thing. Uh, yeah. To be honest oh, though, with a lot of games that clicking can be annoying. Uh, let's see, pizza. I'm good. Doom Eternal finally arrived. Had a lot of problems with downloading and it just finished downloading. So I'm going to play that. Just <laughs> wanted to pop in here and say hi to everyone. All right. You have fun. I can hear Let's the game see. finally. Yeah. Mm. Uh, also, Pizza, you can hear everything, right? You can hear the game. You can hear me and you can hear the others, right? Because if that doesn't, <laughs> if that's not the case, then this entire cast is a failure already. Uh, Please tell me you're going to pick Ranger. I'm going to pick Ranger. There is a slight difference between these archetypes. Uh, hmm. This one actually comes with a, a pet, it seems. Let's go with the pet. Yeah, I, I want us to name, uh, name the little QK Rom. <laughs> Wait, are they, do they have the same fur color? Uh, similar. Yeah, the, the wolf here is just a lot darker. Okay, each of these, on each of the classes, you can also just get more information about them. Rangers are incredibly skilled with the bow. They can eventually deliver remarkable techniques like shooting through groups of enemies with a single arrow or firing multiple arrows. And yeah, then we have the stats here. 
which are advised to be take uh, rangers can be can well, go for melee or ranged or a mixture of the two i'm going to be making a melee range a ranger and i actually have a bit of a not really a guide but advisory on my phone open on my phone so let's see we'll go with a dark hunter ranger normally over here you would have three uh, paths to choose from let's actually go back and click the normal ranger and you can see them we have these are archetypes basically pre-made uh, paths that will automatically select uh, perks and skill points investments and such uh, good if you're a new player if you're more experienced which i wouldn't call myself i'm only going with customize because i'm using the guide or the advisory so yeah on some on some things just you can only choose customize though so that it makes a lot that yeah, makes a lot of things already a uh, advanced thing especially for people who are unfamiliar with dungeons and dragons okay let's see uh ta -ta -ta -ta. any recommended yep yeah. races let's see dwarf rangers hard to kill Elf range of great dexterity, but few hit points. Halflings, humans, drow. Not recommended to <laughs> roll a drow ranger, even though one of the most even though one of the most famous um, <clears throat> D and D characters is a drow ranger. Uh, it's, it's, um... Yeah, even I know him. I know about him through accent, like when I uh looking through lore videos and uh, wikis, I noticed there was always a drow appearing somewhere in the, search, uh, in, in the searches. And I end up wondering, is there something special about this drow? Let's and then so I learned the name. And it's a full franchise. I'm... These guides from the DDO wiki are a bit of a scattershot thing on how exactly they tell things in, to, in detail or not. So I'm just going with uh, some advice things here. Uh, let's see. Raise them to 14. Hmm? Just human for the moment. Who get, who gets who, who starts with an extra feat, but they have one less... Con uh, or, I forget if I'm accurate. And the thing with the humans in 3.5 D&D uh, is that they get an extra feat, which is something they get in a lot of D&D versions, I believe. But in exchange, they have less of a, <clears throat> a stat boost at the start. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I recall it when being younger that many people picked humans because of that uh, feat uh, thing. That, like... Apparently, people thought, oh, that's all powered. Let's ignore everything else. Hmm. This made me so bored that I never picked humans. Let's see. Let's at least have that equalize because our dexterity is still useful for some armors. Um, intelligence. Uh, let's just go with this. Like, maybe not the best, but we're not trying to min max or anything. Okay, then we can have our skill points. We have 28. The amount you have is based on your class and your intelligence uh, score. But for now, uh, let's see. Spot is always good because it lets you see invisible enemies. Okay, pizza is back. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, can you hear everything? Like, uh, uh, not the game at the moment because the music is turned off or run out. Can you hear me and Drakir Dr 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 and Rom? Uh, let's see. Uh, audio. Hello, hello. Test one, two. Three, four, yeah, five. No, the, yeah, six, seven, eight. Um, you can hear all of you guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's God. Um, Marco. Oh, dear. I'm going to read this out. You enter a hollow forest. When you take a few steps, you notice a bearded dragoon typos here going by your side later a where will it doesn't work at the hardware store people <laughs> i think 
Jungs, uh, that would you be out hilarious. of nowhere, they introduce as Drakir the Bitter Dragoon around the Ver Wolf. You get two more party members, roll the stats bonuses. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. <laughs> I feel like it's smoking uh, us both from. Uh, yeah, Pizza, at the moment the game doesn't have any audio because the, it doesn't loop. The The music for the character creation doesn't loop and the buttons don't give sounds. Uh, let's see. Let's put some points in there. And just continue on. Okay. Uh, let's see. We get to pick three feats. Two normal ones and a favorite enemy. Uh, I'm just going to say this. In Dungeons & Dragons Online, most, just a big majority of the enemies you would be facing are undead. So that's just a good one to pick. Uh, let's see. So let's just get... Yeah. Aberration, animal, elf, human, monstrous... Uh, wait. Isn't there supposed... Isn't undead supposed to be under there or somewhere? Or is that, does, yeah, does that one just come available later? Hmm. Let me see. Uh, advisory, search, uh, secondary... Let's see. Favorite enemies. Okay. Uh, aberration, useful at higher levels. Elements, constructs... Where, is there just a bunch of them missing here or something? Hmm. Okay, so something's weird here. There, there's a bunch missing here. Or did this... Uh, it could be that this guide is out of touch. Um, hmm. Let me see. Well, you Which look of at these... the wrong guide. Yeah, this is this one is called starting a range, but the the wiki is old as well, so it's likely that some patch mass uh, messed this up or something. Um, let's see, because this used to be a very a lot longer of a list, like uh. Aberrations, Constructs, Elementals, Evil Outsiders, Giants, Goblinoids, Undead, Reptilian. But yeah, it seems they've just lowered it down. Um, I gotta go, I'll be right back. All right. Let's just go with Animal then. And on these feats, any that are advised in the guide here, even though it's likely outdated. Uh, Multiclassing, no... But once two-handed fighting of his sorts, I believe. Um, let's see. Martial feats. That's not, no proficiency at the moment. Rule no ranged for the moment. Wait, if can I, I pick right, another? You should no. be able to uh, later is a level of add more favorite enemy. Yeah, you get those at certain level points. Yep. It hmm. almost made me confused. Oh. Like, favorite enemy. I don't know why. Somehow that concept sounds weird to me. I think it. I think it might be limited due to the Dark Hunter path. So let's continue from there. Customize human. Let's go with about sixteen strength. Was it just ten dexterity, fourteen constitution for health? Um. Wait, it was. Wisdom was advised to be 14, because you have spells, or you can get spells later on. And let's just put that to 12 and leave the Charisma as a dump stat. Okay, um... Jump is nice for just getting around, search, mm, more the rogues thing. Spot is always useful, because you can spot uh, invisible enemies that way. Uh, diplomacy... Uh, so use a magic device is very useful in the late game I've heard I've not gotten there myself and heal as well just good for self-healing without spells and okay what hmm let me see okay now there is a much longer of a list okay with dragons even as well Let's see. It's a very long list now. <laughs> okay. There. Undead. Undead are just an absolute pain to fight, since they tend to have a lot of immunities as well. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Not too hard sense. fighting. Let's uh, be honest. 
Mm. Shooting skeletons with a bow doesn't sound like the most good... It doesn't sound like a good idea. Yeah. And let's take toughness here, which gives extra health. Power attack allows us to, well, sacrifice attacking a chance for extra damage. And well, favorite enemy, da, 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 plus two damage for each favorite enemy feat you have. If you have more than one favorite enemy feat that applies to a particular enemy, the, the damage applies for each type. Okay, so if you're facing like an undead lizard and you have favorite enemy undead and lizard, you get plus four damage. Okay, and just hit randomize a few times. And let's see. Uh... That's probably taken. Then let's see. But you can give a, sur a surname. Yeah, but you you did not require. Let's see. Is that going to? Yes, that is going to work. Okay. Hmm. Uh, with alignments, it's not really much of an is thing, I believe. But you can, uh, you can suffer penalties you if you wield wield weapons that are opposite. Awesome. To your alignment. Memories of a large white dragon striking your ship ah, you're come awake. flooding back. Oi, you ain't undead, are you? Can you talk? Speak to me. Uh. Okay, oh. can that be heard, everyone? I could, I could hear him. Okay. Uh, Marco or Pizza, you it. can hear that. Oh, welcome back. What yes. happened to our pants? <laughs> well, we were just in a shipwreck. And well, there's a rogue. Can you talk? Speak to me. <laughs> okay, they actually have a line if you were waiting around. Okay, that means that at the absolute least, every all of the audio is going to the stream. And well, the recording is on my side, so that should mean that everything is working. Okay. Jeet Shimish. Hoi, were you on that ship that got attacked by the dragon? You're the first survivor we've seen, and sailors have been washing up for hours. Are you looking for survivors or looting bodies? Now don't go blaming a poor rogue for making a living. Besides, I didn't take nothing from you. You got nothing worth taking. Yes, I seem to have placed my belongings somewhere between here and the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> it's right dangerous to walk around without a blade. For my good deed of the day, I can give you something back at my camp. If right, lead the way. If what the said was true, no one but you made it to the island alive. Come on, follow me. It may be worth following this rogue. For now. Hmm. Okay, this I hope the narrator is audible enough. He's audible. Okay. The, 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 the narrator or the narration of this game is considered one of its highlights. We'd really help him to immerse you play as, as you play. Okay, here's a weapon for you, but then you do me a little favor. Tit for tat, right? Well, it depends on what you want. Now I'll take that as a yes. Here, which, of the, which one of these do you want? Let's see. Great axe, heavy mace, long sword, cro light crossbow. Let's go with the long swords. What he offers depends on what what your class is proficient with. And since uh, rangers are very proficient with a lot of weapons, there's a lot of choice. But if I were to bring up a, a rogue, I would just get a, a rapier. Okay. As you take hold of the weapon, feeling its balance, you can't help but notice this Jeets has more he wants to say. And no, this is not Morrowind, Marco. This is Dungeons and Dragons Online. <laughs> it had it very prominently marked here. And yeah, there's a lot of even story uh, equipment slots, as you can see. You start off this with three nice. pretty gen you start off with three pretty generously sized bags. But they can fill up pretty quickly in the early game. And yeah, here we just have a bunch of hints and such. We could have skipped all of this, but since uh, this is our first time streaming this, I might as well show the tutorial. There's also this mode, which you, you aren't told about until you accidentally hit the button. Just look around mode. This is very useful for if you want to focus on combat. Just click out of it again. And yeah, you can interact with life by left clicking on characters. You can select things so that they pop up here without getting put away. Uh, with, by right-clicking. Useful for sp focusing down on the specific targets, especially if you're ranged, attacking, if you're attacking with range. 
Let's see. That weapon suits you. So, ready to help me out? What do you ta uh, what task do you have for me? Here's the deal. Salimus is waiting for us up in a cave up the path. <clears throat> Pardon? Just back from dinner, so the usual. Uh, go and tell her we'll be along shortly, just as soon as we finish with all the salvage on the beach. That's it. Give a message to Salimus. Well, I'm sure Salimus would appreciate any help you can give her, too. And it'll make her less likely to smash my noggin in when I catch up. Very well. I'll go to this cave and help her. Salimus is at the grotto. Tell her to keep her knickers on. <laughs> yes, we have a very Aussie halfling. And yeah. Uh, Originally, a bit of this camera is, was made for Big Boomers to audience. Even though they had... They actually had to remove a half lean prostitute. Salimus is See? in the grotto. I shall show you the way. And yeah, this character here is a Warforged, which is basically the uh, D and D version <laughs> of a robot. Will it be more it, like an ant? I still need to look up a video that does a clear red. definition it's between an android cyborg and a robot. I believe cyborg cyborgs were our flesh people who have been wholly or partially replaced uh, with mechanics. Androids, well, they are just we are. Go always mechanical. With Salimus. I'll wait oh. here for Jeets. I am kind of tired right now. I think I'll leave. I hope uh, me staying did help with some of the testing. Of course, and you're always welcome. Is this Salimus, yeah. so, yeah. the cleric you were sent to hmm. find? Rest up Later. and we be, be well, Rom. Yeah, I'll get well, Rom. You guys... Stay safe. Have a good night. See ya. See ya, Roman, and be safe. See ya. And we have someone new in chat. So, gu guacamole. Okay, that's one. I know what you're trying to go for, but you're, you know, you've written it out more like it sounds, more like not less how it's written. <laughs> that might be the point, Hillian. Yeah. Uh, so how are you today? And welcome to this test stream. Who in Kyber are you? Well, well, we're just playing some Dungeons and Dragons online. Okay, identify yourself. Um, generally, these these don't really have too much of an effect of where you of a, what you select. Sometimes you can just cut conversations short, but this this is mostly for role play. And well, <laughs> what is Dungeons and Dragons about other than role play? Okay, just slaughtering monsters. But <laughs> this role play is usually second. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Doing well on lunch break. Are all of you new to D in DDO? Uh, I'm not, but I presume that uh, Drakir likely is. Maybe uh, less uh, no, to Dungeons Dragons. I have not even done some reading. I was almost thinking of buying it, but I just decided against it. Okay, it is free nowadays. And, hmm. I, I'm reasonably familiar with DDO. I like I know that you can't take uh, the same buff to expect like a you, you can't take a plus one on something and then another plus one and expect a plus two effect. That's not how that works. Uh, I think I actually have a physical copy of DDO in my desk somewhere. Uh, not sure if I bought that originally or just got that second hand, but I did play this game for a bit uh, like five ten years ago or so and but i have been getting back into it recently because a streamer i like started playing it and well <laughs> they started a group and nowadays you know, a bunch of the people are still playing uh, let's see oh dear. So, i am the ranger rangera a dragon attacked my ship and i alone survived then i met your companions who asked me to protect you until they arrive uh, da, 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 woke up in the beach to a rogue who most likely took my possessions. He then extorted me my promise to be your lackey. Uh, I humbly apologize for my associate. He has a good heart, even if he does not always show it. I'll help you navigate this cave, which leads to a nearby fishing village. You'll be able to find a hot meal and some work there. Uh, let's see. Oh Ilya. I, I hope I misheard you, but I don't think you did... Uh, but uh, I suspect you did miss say a bit there uh, earlier. No, oh, what did I miss say then? You said I think you said the ranger. 
<laughs> well, a lot of D&D characters are rather deranged murder hobos. And let's... Oh, okay. God. Guacamole has been playing since 2012. Nice. Like, my main... My, the, my highest level character is level 9. And, yeah, from the, go, going with the lack of level 9 dungeons, I've heard it is going to be a slog to get to level 10. Uh, but I am just going to continue with them eventually. Uh, let's see. What exactly are you doing in these caves? I've been hired to clear this uh, cave of Sohagen. Jeets and Talvron are supposed to help me. I hope they don't tarry too long. If you come with me, you should be comfortable uh, with Suwagen yeah, blood all over that rusty weapon of yours. Uh, what's a Suwagen? They're ugly, scaly, slimy, and they like to sacrifice innocents to their dark devour god. For these reasons, I am eager to smite them. Okay, something else. Is Jeet Shimas your friend? Aren't you worried about turning your back to a rogue? I once thought so too, but Jeet changed my mind long ago. By the silver flame, he can still get my blood boiling sometimes, but he's never let me down when it truly mattered. Also, Talbrun thinks, <laughs> thinks the world of him. Okay. Uh, let. I shall surround us with a protection spell. Her yeah, since it's the tutorial dungeon. You from dying, though you can still suffer injuries. Okay. This effect will wear off when you leave these caves. Now, let's be about it. Okay. okay. Hmm? I just remembered why they removed the Hoffman prostitute, which had, we was there on launch in a few years. I'll remain here and bash any Sawagan trying nope. to sneak out. I will type you why they removed her. So apparently, many people did like her. Okay. Uh, let's so just click this away. Can you... Okay, just gotta drop you down here. Shuffling and wheezing of some creature coming from the corridor ahead. Let's see. Ahead of you is a monster. Hold your left mouse button to swing your weapon at it. Yeah, you can just hold the button down to keep attacking. And you can see the dice in the lower right there. The lever at the rear of this corridor most likely controls the gate where the cleric, Salimus, is waiting. Yeah, the game actually rolls dice for every attack and you know, most actions that you do. Okay, that's interesting, but also concerning. Salimus isn't too honked at me. Thanks for putting in the good word. Yep, good word. I called you out. I'm here to watch your behind now. But yeah, it's rather generous with the rolls. Even if you roll a one, it generally won't fail you all the time. As long as the amount just still hits. Talbron, cover me with your spells. Jeets, kill anything that tries to flank us. You, open the door. Wait, so... I didn't think they, they were able to cause magic. What, it's empty? Oi, where's the bloody Sawagin? Yeah, the, the war, Warforge can is, uh, it can uh, use magic. Okay. Just gotta beat up some fish. Make some sashimi. Yeah. There are more of them up there. Stay alert. Okay. Whilst we're doing with this, we do have a skill bar in the lower right as well. A lot of those things we can't really use too much, uh, or aren't too useful to us. But we can use this one. That's the power attack. It gives us. Uh, it lowers our attack to our chance to hit so by giving a debuff on that. Come down and fight. But it does give a buff on a damage. The you. Right. We're still getting. A good bonus on to hit. If we're moving around, it lowers as well. But yeah, it's a bit of a trade off with that. And if you can get your attack score high enough, you can just run circles around enemies. It also makes you harder to hit, I think. I'm mean, hardly an expert on this game. Can't pick this. Anyone see a key? Curious. I just stepped on something. Good work. I see a key down there. Who's up for a swim? You oh, grabbed the silver key. key. <laughs> they barely had a chance before you dove in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I knew you'd come in, Andy. This way. Okay. 
Swimming is not something that comes up every time, but it is it is a good point to have at least some points in swim. Uh, where is it? There, because this uh, this uh, determines how much well how much air you have in your lungs as you swim. Typically, <laughs> to put it simply. I'm weary. Okay. Let's take a moment to rest. Ha! I still got plenty of stamina. I can go all night long. Why don't you okay. scout ahead then? Just don't get yourself in trouble. Now you're talking. Okay. Tall. I'll take a little. If you're done resting, go and scout ahead with Jeets. Okay, this I didn't know. Uh, yeah, you have rest shrines, and you can also resurrect defeated allies at these, yeah, as the resurrection shrine, as it says right there. But I didn't know that the time that it takes to re for them to recharge differs per difficulty. <laughs> differs per difficulty. Differs per difficulty. So that's five times fast. <laughs> no. <laughs> and well, what would be a dungeon without some traps? Boy, that's a nasty trap. Lucky for you, I'm here. Why is that? Only blokes with rogue skills can deal with traps. Blokes like me. Don't you worry, if you really want to, you can find a trainer to teach you rogue abilities. Once you've got enough experience to handle it, that is. Alright, I'll wait until you disable the trap. And yeah. It, when it, Nearly all the time when there are traps, there's also a control box like that. You need to find that and disable it to disable the traps. Most of the time, you will find the box in front of the traps, but in some places they are smart enough to put them behind the traps, so you will have to dodge them. Oh uh, let's see. Guacamole in chat. Sunder gives you a chance to temporarily reduce enemy armor. Trips gives a chance to temporarily knock down an enemy, basically stunning them. Uh, partially right, breath meter is also affected by your armor and shield as well. Okay, thank you for the, <laughs> thank you for the details, Guacamole. And yeah, let's over here we have Sneak, which we're not going to have much use for since we're a ranger, not a rogue. Sunder we have here. Uh, <clears throat> this is one of the attacks that, or one of the skills that you can use that has a save in, uh, that uh, where you, uh, if you hit with it, the target has to make a save roll, which is basically like uh, if they can resist the effect, be it mental, be it, well, reflex based, if they're fast enough to dodge it or if they're strong enough to resist it in this case it's a fortitude hit and the save depends on well it starts at the 10 and then one of your stat modifiers like gets i added to it because we have 16 strength we have plus three on that so the save is 13 and it's the same for trip but it goes for on the reflex save instead uh generally Enemies will have weaknesses and strength in these, similar to how classes will have them. Like, for example, wizards are going to be very strong in will, but they are going to be weaker in fortitude and reflex. And let's see, we have wild empathy. Let's see. Activate this ability to lower an animal or beast's aggression, effectively mesmerizing them. Okay. I've never made a rogue before, but we can try that out some time. What? Ranger! Yep, yeah, the range of... <laughs> uh, tongue tied, and well, heal basically speaks for itself. You try to heal a character, you need healing kits for that, though. Yeah, and... Sneak makes sense for Ranger, especially if they use bows, since, you yeah. know, sneak and hunt. The High Priestess should be up ahead. The onus for much suffering rests squarely upon her slimy, webbed hands. <laughs> there she is, performing some kind of profane blood magic. I will open the door. Prepare yourself. Ready? Go! Okay. You can note that the priestess has the name in red. That basically marks him as a boss. Nope. It's something in the inventory has been damaged. It can happen from acid attacks. And, well, that was that. Employer, there's a secret passage around here somewhere leading to Corthos. You boys look for it. I must cleanse the profane energies around the shrine. Let Salimus do her thing. You and I'll take care of the important stuff. The treasure. 
Uh, yeah, treasure chests. You'll find these typically at the end of a dungeon, but you can also find them on side paths. And, well, you'll want to find these whenever you can, because they have loot in them, of course. This one will always have a weapon and armor for you. That's uh, you can actually use some ammunition if you have get a bow and such. And always a ring of water breathing, which is a good little thing for if you are a bit slower on the water. Because you will take damage as you start drowning. There's something fishy in this room. Try searching around. You feel a stiff draft from somewhere in this room. Perhaps the hidden passage to the village is in here. Uh, let's see. I actually put away the search ability, I believe. So, just gotta find it in here. Air. Drag it in. And just look around for it. Found the secret passage? Go on, open it then. What the heck? Tidy lasses and pints up the wazoo! Here I come! We're almost done here. The way out is up ahead. Don't my neighbors understand it's Wednesday? Please come speak with me. And yeah, at, at the end of every quest, you can also get an item, typically randomized, but in this case, the entire list is predetermined. Let's see, we made it, Rangara. The door ahead should take us to the village, but before we go, I want to give you something from my stash. And thanks for your assistance uh, to me and my fellows this day. Oh, thank you very much, Lady Vil uh, Vilune. I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, call me Salimus. You may, always walk, uh, may you always walk the righteous path, and the holy flame look kindly upon your de days and deeds. And to you, brave cleric. Okay. And let's see. Uh... If, a, if, an, yeah, if an item has, like, a yellow exclamation point at the bottom, that means that you can you can use it, but you will take a penalty, or it will only have a certain chance to activate, typically with wands and scrolls and such. So, for now, let's just take a better longbow. You're not long, long sword. Blew. Okay. Let's replace that. We could dual wield these, but if I just open up the tab on the details, now you can here you can see the damage that this weapon will do, how on what rolls it will crit, and how much the a crit damage will do, and this is the um, the bonus to your attack rolls. So if I do this, you notice that it drops, and on the offhand it's very low. That's because we don't we don't have a feat for dual wield fighting. So that is generally a bad idea. Now, armor takes a bit to, to take on to prevent people from just swapping between items. And yeah, different uh, armor pieces have different uh, appearances, so you can always play a bit of fashion with that. We just uh, throw out the rags. Let me say this. It kind of makes sense. It takes a moment when for you to take out of the on armor. You find yourself yeah. in Corthos Village. The Sahuagin have threatened this place for generations. Judging from how it looks now, the Sahuagin are winning. However, some hopeful souls still hold out for help to arrive. Okay, quest challenge chalices. Yeah, just a chalice over someone's heads means that they have uh, a quest or you need to interact with them for quests. Uh, new equipment, yeah. If you equip a bow, you also need to equip arrows. Makes sense, of course. And just choosing re rewards. You can only choose one reward, of course. Now, do we now, where did you come from? I guess it doesn't matter. I'm Randall, the traveler. This is Corthos Village, and it's going to be you know, through tough times. Or through hard times. What harm times, you say? Why don't you have a look around the village and find out for yourself? Okay. Uh, yeah, the tutorial on um, that basic... A spirit binder is basically where you respawn if you die. And let's see. Kaja Baudater, Bauerdater has a quest for us. Let's see. I swear to Siberus, there's unholy wailing coming from Hayton's family crypt. No one wants to check on it for fear of the Swagin and their cronies. But what could they have want with Hayton's crypt? Oh dear, why won't anyone go down in there and see? Let's see. Uh, Hayton's family crypt. Shouldn't we talk to a Hayton about this? My dad used to tell me stories of the Haytons. Hundreds of years ago, when the Swagen first came, Bjorn Hayton fought them tooth and nail. And when he died, his children fought them, and when they died, their children fought them. 
Oh, Lars. Lars Hayton was the last of them, and I was... Well, never mind that. He's gone missing, and everyone thinks he's dead. But I know he's still alive. What if this railing has something to do with it? We have to go so, and look. So many Scandinavian names in that bloodline. <laughs> Very well. If it'll ease your mind, I'll check out the crypt for you. Now we have our quests. And now we have our dungeon, which are marked with yellow doors, if you can enter them. You know, great outdoors is, well, you can enter them, but you don't have to quest to. So, we can select a difficulty. You start with just the normal and casual ones. And if once you finish normal, you unlock hard, which is always one level higher, and elite, which is another level higher. And Reaper is just the really, really hard mode, which has like plus 20 or something, so that's pretty high. You can also select if you're going to group privately or openly, which will open up a looking for group will, will open up a looking for group uh, spots for you. And over here, you can just check in on just the average it, on the difficulty of a place. Some play some dungeons highly suggest you go in with a party, and some have a minimum requirement of people. Like there is one dungeon where you absolutely need four players. Okay. Coming from deep in the crypt, you hear the strange and unsettling echoes that Kaya spoke of. And by the passage leading in, a grim-faced man glares at you. Let's see. Jacob, uh, Jacob E. Drexelhand. I haven't seen you before. You're near the Corthos. Hmm. Well, you should go back to the village. This crypt is falling apart. You could trip on some rubble and hurt yourself. Uh, you're the Crypt Keeper? Aren't you supposed to be maintaining this place? Eh, who has time for menial chores with Corthos' impending doom? Sawagan so want to destroy the village, and the only safe people are the ones who joined the Devourer cult. Mark my words, in a month's time the only people left in Corthos will belong to the cult. We'll see, but now I need to make sure there are no cultists in this crypt. Let me pass. And uh, yeah, not... Voice acting besides the narrator is rare in the game. Strange. Now, let's see. Sarcophagi line the walls, but they're broken open and empty. Where did the bodies go? Oh. Uh, okay. Thank you, Guacamole, and you have a nice day. Oh, have a nice you day, you Guacamole. Strange about the wall to the west. If you search the wall, you may discover more. Okay, there is a hidden pathway there, but we don't have enough of a search uh, in search to actually find it. I don't know if that's a roll or just a flat amount, but yeah, tough luck with that. Oop. That was a critical hit. What were those cultists up to? This bears more investigation. A treasure uh, chest glimmers in the dark passage here. I'm getting a bit of Lovecraftian feel here. Do that again. I guess the... Though rusty, this mm -hmm. longsword is still sharp. It's a slashing weapon, perfect for slicing through putrid zombie flesh that would resist puncturing or bludgeoning weapons. Uh, yeah, certain enemies can have resistances or outright immunities. And, well, as you can guess, a skeleton would be rather resistant to arrows. There's a Sahuagan in here, performing some kind of ritual. Come, dead son of Corthos. A magical crest appears from the destroyed altar. If you take it with you, it may be useful later. You continue uh, to hear cultists about their evil work from further inside the crypt. Okay, the reason that I went for the altar there is because of this. Optional objectives, as you can find, which give experience rewards. Like, you, you only get rewards from objectives and just fulfilling quests. You don't get experience from killing. Well, technically you can, but only in by killing certain amounts in exploration areas, not in dungeons. You can also just pop right. this out to get a list of how much experience we'll get. You get a bonus for a lot of things, like finding secret doors, breaking a lot of stuff, uh, disabling traps, and killing um, uh, killing a certain amount of monsters. And just a 
nice little summary and it's totals at the bottom okay Okay. I should probably investigate if, uh, if uh, D D invented the word summer uh, hagen. Take care to keep your own health up. If it feels like it started with D D, then spread to other franchises since they did not copyright it. Another treasure chest. Okay. Perhaps the cultists brought it here, but this heavy mace is a bludgeoning weapon, ideal for smashing apart skeletons. Their bones are resistant to puncturing or slashing weapons. <laughs> Breaking stuff, we need Link to There's help us. No, Marco. It croaks. Cragwolf Hayton, in life you served the light. Another crest drops out as you smash the altar. There might still be other altars elsewhere in this crypt. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh... I'm mostly rushing for the little bits of extra experience. But if you wait for a bit or fail to smash the altar or kill the Sarawagan quick enough, they will resurrect them as a zombie or a skeleton. And, well, you get no exp extra experience for that. There you go. If you get a killing blow, it's always marked with a skull, so you you're not you don't keep swinging at a corpse. What the heck? This is why I can't step by some cultures into some fancy practice cremation. Yeah. <laughs> Though I would not be surprised if there's some way of making ash elementals or something. I don't think that's a, an elemental at that point. Hello. There we go. Okay. Notice the, that the text was yellow there instead of orange. Yellow means that it is res not resisted, but it is less effective than other uh, damage types. And well, skeleton slashing, no flesh to slash. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, skeletons would be a, a quite annoying foe. Like, it's because it's basically for you want a maze against. Possibly dangerous. Uh, if you search, or love of. Be able to find out more. Yeah, it, it is the tutorial dungeon, so they are very chatty. Oh, and go the neighbors. <laughs> okay, this little mark here means that you uh, your spot is high enough to see that there to know that there is a trap nearby. But once again, we don't have enough sur inserts to I actually see it. Out of the wall. As the gate slams shut. Simple enough, though. We just pull this. We would have actually gotten in here if we had found. Let me hide that. If we had found the uh, hidden wall. But we can just grab this. From here, let's see. We've got some gloves. Now, these are spellcaster gloves, not really useful for us. There's typically gold and just a bunch of gems and other stuff in these. It is completely randomized. Which can mean that you can end up with absolute junk or actually with very good things for you. But yeah, we now have three of these crests. So let's head over here and heal up a bit. Okay, yeah, we you've already said that. <clears throat> okay. It's got to rest up a bit to heal. It would also refill your spell points, which are these down here. Their rangers aren't really that a big of spellcasters, so they don't get as many. It, another Sahuagin performs unholy rituals at a devourer altar. This barrier appears linked to three sockets in the wall. If you find the crest to those sockets, it may allow you passage. You fit the last crest in place. And the magic shield dissipates. The Sahuagin inside spits out in a venomous blast. Ah, there we go. It's not like the undead that they create are that powerful, but it's just a bit of extra experience. Okay. Your bold action saved Korthos and brought the Sahuagin's fell scheme to naught. The treasure chest in the antechamber is now yours. 
Am I noticing that even the narrator is unsure how to pronounce the name? <laughs> Maybe. Also, we won't have that narrator for any more past this point, I believe. I don't know why. It might be that the old narrator died or something. Uh, but yeah, just... Uh, I'm this pretty quest... sure she's alive. No, the old one. The other vo narrator, which the game is more known for, I think. Uh, they must have redone all of this at some point and put the new voice and uh, the new narrator over it. Oh, okay. I, I don't remember them narrating anything else in the game. Uh, Let's see. Now they come down. What the? I still wonder if they are tr uh, actively upstairs trying to make sure the guest is not playing too loud music. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Rangara, I, I was afraid you'd been hurt. Did you look in the crypt? What's in there? The Sawagan were resurrecting the Hatons, turning their bodies into undead minions. But don't worry, I put a stop to it. Oh, how horrible. But what about... Did you find his large Haton? Was he... You didn't find a trace of him down there? So he could still be alive. Oh, you've done me a world of good. Okay. These first few quests here in Corthos will often have just pre predetermined rewards as well. We have an Amulet of Inner Focus, which gives plus one concentration and plus will save. And then we have the Amulet of the Brutes, which has Curse of Dullness, <laughs> minus one penalty to intelligence, and Curse of Foolishness, minus one to wisdom, but it gives plus one constitution. <laughs> okay, let's actually pick this one up. We'll, we'll replace it soon enough. to stem the Sahuagan Tide. But their courage led to naught but grievous injuries. Corthos needs someone with more than just guts. Okay. Uh, we can mark items as junk, so we can just easily sell them when we uh, at a vendor. And gems like these, you can also just sell those off easily enough. We don't have a need for throwing daggers. We have a potion. We have two potions of jumping plus 10. Jumping determines how high you can jump like this. So it's, it's nice to have one or two of these around in case you need to jump over something. Uh, let's see. We have no need for that. Or that. So we can just toss those. Since those were our starter items, we can't sell them. Also, when a character has a blue chalice over their head, that means that they have a quest that you can repeat. Okay. okay. First off now, though... We have another quest that we can pick up here from Linus Weir. You're a dangerous ranger, if I've ever seen one. But I reckon you've got a heart too, up for helping us poor Corthos folks. Uh, yes, I've been called a champion in my time. Naturally, I must lend my strength to the unfortunates. See that house yonder north? That's our storehouse. And in the back room, old Lars Hayton put his scrolls. Now the good folks of Corthos... <coughs> Corthos need that scroll, so someone's got to go in and get it. I do it myself, but the storehouse got a wee infestation. Rodents and spiders is all. But here's the kick. Old Hayden pulled a shield to keep Scaly Sora Wag and hands off of his scrolls. Um, only he ain't around no more to turn it off, but I'm sure you're bright enough to do it. The village storehouse is just next to the town tavern. What do you say? What's so important about this scroll? Hayden once wrote uh, this one scroll about. Oh, that's all about dragons. Ah, that's right, I said dragons. What with that white dragon making all this ice and otherwise being a mortal danger. Well, that scroll ought to come in handy. You follow? Alright, I'll bring the scroller back to you. Okay. Before we go into there, though, which is up here, minimap yes, pointing out. Of the yonder. <laughs> Now we're going to the fighter trainer, because we've gone up in rank, not level. You level up every five ranks or so, but since you start at rank one, that means you level up at rank six, 11, uh, 16, etc. But by gaining ranks, you sometimes get action points, which you can actually spend at your trainers on enhancements. And there's where these skill trees come into play. Oh dear. You will always have a racial skill tree, and then typically three, sometimes more, in, a, in class enhancements, as it says at the top. Let's see, we have Arcane Archer, Deepwood Stalker, and Tempest. Let's see. 
Uh, equipped goes gain a bows get a plus one bone enhancement bonus for each arcane uh, archer core ability you possess. So each of these. Uh, all bows are treated as implements in your hands, granting spell power, since, well, rangers can cast spells and such, and implements just make spells more powerful. Let's see, plus one sneak attack die, plus 10% positive spell power. Your point blank shot and range at sneak attack is increased by five meters for every deep witch stalker core ability you possess. Okay, point blank shot is a very powerful feat, uh, which, act, which if you're close enough to a target with a ranged weapon, it will actually deal double weapon damage. So, for example, if we were to do that with this, we would get... <clears throat> 2d6 damage instead of 1d6 damage and some okay. weapons have some big die to roll like 1d10 or 2d8 that kind of makes sense yeah so it is a gamble sense let's see yeah you, you prefer to keep them at range okay and last we have tempest here with this first one while you are dual wielding melee weapons, you gain a plus two shield bonus to armor class, physical resistance rating, and magical resistance rating, which are damage reduction values. Armor class is how hard you are to hit, and those two just further reduce damage, uh, reduce damage if you are hit. Uh, so this increases by plus one for each additional Tempest core ability you acquire. In addition, if you are a level 1 character, you gain a 2 weapon fighting feat until you reach character level 2. 2 weapon fighting feat, uh, uh, 2 weapon fighting is granted permanently when you take a second ranger level. Okay. Uh, the 2 weapon fighting reduces the penalty for fighting with 2 weapons and increases the chance to produce offhand attacks while fighting with 2 weapons, or as an unarmed monk, by 20% uh, to 40%. Okay, let's take that. And we have another action point. Let's see. 25% uh, you know, chance to negate potential item wear. Okay. Not too useful now since you can... Repairs are pretty cheap and you gain, you know, you gain money re rather fast. Uh, let's see. Reflexes against saves. Your shield of whirling steel grants plus one additional armor class. Okay. If you possess deflect arrows, it can trigger once every four seconds. And just general skill upgrades. These are generally less useful in these. So let's go with this one. Better defense is always nice. Okay. Now let's go get that scroll. Uh, actually, uh, there's the vendor over here. Some of these will be more specialized. But for now, we can just add all the junk to the cell tab. Oop, click all of these away. Sell. And we can sell all gems like that. Okay. Repair. Just add all. It's not too bad. Two gold, eight silver, nine copper. But we already have 92 platinum. So, yeah. I I think you, get, you got money a lot slower before in the game. But that's been upped quite a lot. Now, here we have a hireling vendor which is basically a mercenary that you can bring along into fights. So, let's see. Unless you are playing something that has heals themselves, it's always a good idea to get a, a cleric or a paladin. So, let's get them. And we can summon them in the dungeon now. Until their contract nice. runs out. Oh! Yeah. Dust and mold fill this ill-maintained storehouse. You can hear the telltale skittering of vermin nearby. And that is the narrator that this game is known for. Okay. Now, uh, uh, now let me just put that... Uh, that not, I'll just put the arrows in there in case we do swap through the bow for some reason or another. Okay. Here we have our hireling contract. <clears throat> These... Uh, these will just stay in your inventory until you use them. And when you do, which for which you need to be clear next, not next, but close to the entrance of a dungeon. And let's summon an NPC for you. And that starts a timer. Expires in 59 minutes, but these timers are paused outside of dungeons and explorable areas. 
So that doesn't mean that you have just exactly one hour to use them. Okay. That, that, that's kind of fair. Yeah, and they are they tend to be pretty cheap as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, keep an eye on your health points. You can also give some commands to them. You can tell them to stay put. You can teleport them to you if you're away from them and they can't jump over something. You can tell them to be aggressive, defensive, or passive. Tell them to interact with something. And then they have four skills here, which depends on, well, what class they are. And it also differs per different hirelings. The animated giant rats. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> this appears to be the main storeroom. It seems the villagers have been preparing for a protracted... I recognize that voice. I think it's the same voice actor as the Elder Gods from Soul Reaver. He falls out of the crate. And yeah, that's why we're smashing I... crates here. There's a key hidden. hidden no, that's not him. You mustn't let the scrolls fall into Actually, yeah, the, the voice is different. That is not John Hurt. Yes, if I can call that's his name, John Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who hurt him to give him that name? No idea. I don't know. He also was the narrator for Merlin, the series. Okay. Uh, if I see. remember right. Night Shield. Okay. May he rest in peace. Only 10% chance, so might as well trash that. Okay. Yeah, we need a key for these doors. These typically are either locked or need special keys. The door swings open, revealing a map. It appears that the floor in this room can be moved and rotated. And yeah, here we have an actual puzzle. Oh no. Yeah, we just need to light these up. And well, I've done this <laughs> I've done this one so often I could probably do it blindfolded at this point. Two hours later. There and there. We gotta look at the input points. And that's all. Three of them. Now this one over here. Then there. And there we go. The protective spell dissipates. All that remains now is to take and deliver the scroll. Here we go. And now we can. We could just teleport out, but we can also just walk out the front door. <laughs> uh, yeah, barrels have cha have a chance to drop money, uh, ammunition for bows and such, or throwing weapons, or sometimes even just equipment that you might or not might might not be able to use. Oh, that's so basically a good idea to take the barrels. Yeah, and as you can see here, it's pa The timer is paused now. I can Okay, I don't know how much of this was here early on, but they do seem to have a lot of good things going on. Yeah, like I said, this Ooh. game has been around for almost 20 years. I think it's actually been 16 since it launched. Which would put it oh, in... 2007? Hmm. Uh, no, the name's being louder again. Yay. <clears throat> But yeah, since, since you can get experience bonuses from uh, smashing stuff and you might get some useful things from it, it is a good idea to just smash barrels along the way. And yes, Marco, that would make Link proud. <laughs> Let's see. Oi, you got the scroll. Let's see what it says. Hmm, what's this then? <laughs> there are no pictures. Well, never mind. I'll get it to someone who knows how to read. Don't worry, I ain't gonna forget you. Here, take this for your trouble. Uh, thank you, Linus. He expected <laughs> there to be a little pictures on how to... Uh... Okay. We get ourselves a belt of false life, which gives extra maximum health. Nice for fighting characters, of course. Wait, what was it called? Yeah, belt, the, the effect of it is called false life, but this one, the item specifically is called rugged belt. Paul's life. Yep. Okay. Let's see. 
The fisherman sitting before you winces as he bandages his leg. What happened to you? It was the Devourer cult. They came and destroyed our Caneth crystals. We tried to stop them. Vogel there was hit pretty bad, and I think I broke my ankle. But he, we got away with one crystal. Just one. We put it in the basement of Corthus Hall. They'll come back for it tonight, and we're in no shape to stop them. Uh, why is this Caneth crystal so important? These crystals were holding back all this unnatural ice. Uh, with the one remaining, we might be still be able to stave off the cold. But without it, Cortos will freeze over within a week. Uh, uh, come to mention it, aren't the islands of Shargon's uh, teeth supposed to be warm? Where is this ice coming from? Bah, it's the dragon that's freezing the island over. It should be thrice blighted. She's blockaded the harbor and froze us all into the ninth hell. Nobody knows why she's helping the Sarwagon and the cults, but I swear if something isn't done, we're all in big trouble. Let's see. I think it's time that this cult was given a taste of its own medicine. I'll protect this crystal for you. Okay, and this dungeon is over here, which is one of a few defense uh, uh, dungeons. So let's just head in. It, that would be mean it's really good to have that companion. Yep. And actually, one easy way to do this quest is to just get a companion, summon them, put them to aggressive, and, well, I'll show in a second. Because the cultists are going to be sneaking in, which means they are hidden, but not so much to our hireling. <laughs> so yeah, we can just play Pikmin for a moment and let the hireling take all of them out. Because it does take a bit between each of them to spawn. And yeah, when you see a shadow figure like that, that means you can spot a hidden enemy. Now, this crystal will break if it takes too much damage, but it's not going to shatter in just one hit or anything. On higher difficulties, when enemies deal more damage, though, that's more likely to happen. Okay. <clears throat> now, there is a chance of something extra happening in this dungeon. A lot of dungeons have that, where there's just a bit of RNG on if some things will spawn in or not. Typically mini-bosses. And oh. there is one that can spawn in here. Also, Dryad Willow uh, Willow Wisp. Yeah, that, ha that has to be one of the most elven names ever. Uh, no, it sounds like the Willow Wisp is a creature on its own. A Dryad as well. It's actually a very odd name for an elf. Okay. She has identity crisis. And it looks like the mini boss didn't spawn. There is a chance that the Sarwagon will come rushing in, and if you if he does and you kill him, which is very likely, a chest will spawn over here for extra loot. So it's not something you can control or anything, but it is always nice when it happens. Generally, when it happens. Alright, we can just head out. And turn this in. Is the crystal safe? Yes, the cultists came as you said they would. And when they tried to destroy the crystal, I felt them. This village will remain warm. Well, warm-ish. <laughs> okay, and then we can select from the Axe Bane, the Spear Bane, or Braces of assist Assistance. These two give damage reduction, but only to specific weapon ta damage types. This one to, yeah, to slashing damage. Since it's, 
it, as it reads there. Passive reduces physical damage taken by four, except from bludgeoning or piercing weapons, which leaves only slashing weapons. And this one is the same, but it only blocks piercing damage, because it's except for bludgeoning or slashing weapons. Oddly enough, there's none for bludgeoning among these. And this one, oh, it will take these. Hero, it is on the people's lips as you walk by. Cautious looks have become friendly nods. Then word comes that your presence is requested in the tavern. Okay. These have a spell attached to them, which is aid. Uh, friend or self, it, take, it, it lasts for three minutes. Uh, adds eight plus one caster level, max level 10, temporary hit points, and grants a plus one morale bonus uh, on attack rolls and saves against fear. This is a, na a nice little boost. And it also says above the bar, which the bar is how much you can use it between rests at shrines. Uh, so yeah, we can only use these once before we need to recharge them. But it's, yeah, it says cast level three. So that's oops. if we use these, it would give us 11 temporary health. So let's just put them on. Do they need to be equipped to be able to be used? But you can swap anything. Anything that isn't armor can be easily swapped out. What the heck is that? That's a, <laughs> a magical grill. Okay, Sigmund Bowerson. I'm glad you're here, Rangera. Uh, I've heard of your efforts on behalf of the village. Thanks to you, opportunities have begun to materialize to turn the situation around. There's a trader in the village, someone who has given himself to the cult willingly, mad as that is. We now know what his next move will be. And that is where you come in, Rangera. The pool is planning to attack the tavern and kill me. But when he arrives with his uh, wagon allies, he won't find me, he'll find you. I think I'm starting to see where this is going. Don't worry, my men will ambush most of the Sawagan before they get near the place. But make sure you kill the traitor. Under no circumstances allow him to get away. His name is Jacoby Drexelhand. Now are you ready? Sound familiar? Yeah, and also... Do you see the speedrun over there? Yeah, if we I talk to them... His name. Yep. What did you read it as? Broader Maiden. <laughs> had a feeling but yeah this is a spirit binder if i fall in battle can you bring me back da -da -da. yes even in the darkest of times the struggle must go on i can bring you back from the great beyond if your work here is not done do you want me to resurrect you here at the wave crest from now on yes i want to be resurrected here these are basically your respawn point if you do get killed which is a is still a possibility it, that you can fail a, a dungeon don't presume that you'll just run through and beat it all however you each and every time, especially as you go up in difficulties. Okay. Let's enter. Charming. And summon our aid. Your waiting bears fruit. This there we go. Up here are, are the effects, and there he is. It's our Crypt Keeper. We're going to put him in a crypt. You again? The Sawagon blame me for your heroics. I'm sick of your tampering. Why? Why are you working for the Sawagon? I'm no fool. Sawagon will kill everyone who doesn't convert. It's inevitable. I'm just watching out for my hide. So says the biggest fool in Korthos. Your life ends now. Sadly, he just runs off like a coward. Leaving us to fight the minions. And they'll come in in waves. Though they aren't too big of a threat. Uh, let me set you... For some reason they always start on defense. What defense gives the Sahagin pause, but you hear more of them gathering outside for a final assault. You notice oh, a small chest hidden behind the bar. Come on. 
Uh, is the corpse blocking the... Sometimes hitboxes will get in the way of interactables. There we go. Just a small guaranteed loot box that is always there. They're back here. Tavern is going to be serving sushi. You have weathered the South Wagon storm. Now, after that traitorous Jacoby Drexel hand, he must have fled into the cellar. And loading text can uh, be specific to uh, certain dungeons, but since they end automatically, it's a bit annoying to read. However, webbed footprints on the ground betray the location of a secret passage. Backtracking them may reveal the way to open that passage. The chamber beyond the secret passage looks ancient, predating Corthos Village. And yes, there are actually webbed footprints all over the floor there. Let's see. Bunch of gems and money. We could equip these robes, but they they give a lot less armor. Which is, you can see over here, the enemies need to roll a 15 or higher to hit us. So if we swap that out, robes, robes just... Robes are very easy to put on since, well, they're robes. Armor takes longer, of course. But yeah, that dropped our armor class. So let's put those back on. Yeah, robes are, of course, used mostly by the magic classes. Or monks. Okay. There we go. And yeah, caves are going to be a very familiar sight through this game. As will be sewers. <laughs> Eating grilled fish. Heck. Combat is likely to look rather simplistic like this, but that is going to be the case for a lot of melee classes. If you're a spellcaster, of course, you have to also put in resource management of your mana and such. Uh, but even melee classes can have little tricks, like uh, there's one feat that will allow you to basically give a massive attack in front of you in a cone, or you can even upgrade that to be a full circle, basically just windmill. Yeah. I think that one is an optional one as well. And we are now rank six. So we can level up. Well so let's, let's loot. Uh, let's see. No extra. Yeah, no extra chests from that one. And let's teleport out. It takes a bit, yeah. of course, to ensure that you don't just jump out at any point. Do you take loot then? Yeah, the, the chest is open. And it's been looted. Okay. There you are. I was worried they got you. Did, did you kill him? Did you kill Drexelhand? Yes, Jacob B. Drexelhand is dead. And may he spend an eternity in Kyber's bowels. This is wonderful news, my friend. We have reached the, trip, uh, the tipping point. <laughs> tripping point? Okay. At, at last we can take the fight to the Saga Hagen. Thank you. Here we go. And they, these are always, these are, <clears throat> of course, the items in this game have rarity as well, with, well, blue being higher than green and all of that. Blue items are going to be rather rare, though. So, let's see, we have a scimitar, which we could use. Let's see, body feeder. When a body feeder weapon wields, uh, you wield, scores a critical hit, you gain 15 temporary hit points that last up to one minute. And plus three swim and jump. Okay, that is a nasty blade. Hmm? Uh, what? Uh, who who is blue? Do you do you mean Marco? Let's see, Lauren's blades. Uh, yeah, th these are named weapons as well, which are also very rare, like a five percent chance to drop at any uh, from any chest. 
Uh, let's see. Lesser monstrous you know, humanoid bane. And we have Mullen's Great Axe with also Lesser Bane. The Oland, you know, Olandrell's Great Bow. On my on my you know, on my rogue, uh, this was my main weapon for a good long time. And uh, it it's because they're names. They are they are of a higher rarity, Marco. There is Rapier, Monstrous Bane. Uh, Monstrous Bane, and then there's the discarded ring for magic users, which, well, gives plus 10 to spell power, or no to spell points. Let's go with this one. Your victories have made the village much safer, but only temporarily. It's time to take the fight to the Sahuagin, out in the wilds of Corthos Island. Okay. Uh, let's see. The base damage rating is a rather simple calculation of how much damage this blade would do, but it is it it bases that on a calculation of the damage dice that it rolls. In in this case, a one d six, any modification numbers. So if this was, for example, a plus one blade, it would count that in. Or plus two blade, it is sadly not. Critical roll chance, which also calculated in this this thing has a 50% chance to crit, which combined with that 15 temporary hit points thing is going to be really useful. Uh, the X2 is the you know, I think I said it already is the 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 crit multiplier. So in this case, it would be plus you know, it would be double damage. Some weapons like great axes will deal triple damage, but they are less likely to crit. And then there's the attack mod and the damage mod, which in this case are both based on strength damage, or strength stats. Okay. Uh, this quest here is stupid. Ignore it. it, it it's, what, it, it's, it's to lure you towards the DDO store. You can abandon quests, but it's still annoying that they haven't removed that yet. Okay. Oh dear. Let's see. There's some more quests open now. One main quest over there with Ursa. And there's also one over here with the mayor who roams. And then there's Handsome Wilm. Okay. Oh, it's you. I, I beseech you, hero. Something terrible has happened. My daughter Orissa has been kidnapped. We heard her scream in the night, but by the time we got to her room, she was gone. Is there anything that can be done? I think she's being held with other prisoners at the old Kenneth Aqueduct. They're being taken there one by one for indoctrination. In Can the, the Kenneth Aqueduct is on the, a rocky cliff <clears throat> on the eastmost uh, tip of Corthus Island. To get there, someone would need to cross all of this island's wilderness. And then that person would need to find a path to climb up and gain entrance to the aqueduct at the top of the cliff. It is our only chance to rescue the prisoners. I beg you, hero, bring my little Arissa back to me. There was also a line in the crypt earlier, when we killed one of the early uh, cultists, where they said that they were forced into the cults. And yeah, th they're basically brainwashing people into f joining forcibly. Okay. Oh, dear. Uh, yes, the time to strike is now. I will rescue your daughter and the others. Okay. I don't really... There, I do believe there is a maximum to the amount of quests you can have at once, but it is a very high number, if there even is one. Anyways, we've got a level to spend, so advance to the next level as a fighter. You can, if you are ready to level up, you can go to other classes, like the sorcerer here, and you can take a level as that class. I... I've never really known if there is a limit to how many times you can multi-class, as it's called. Like, uh, I typically see it only to three different classes. Yeah, I think three is max. Okay. But then it, and the other problem is, at least from when the, it was a theme from when I played, like, uh, Neverwinter Nights and Boris Gate, like, you, got, you get more skills, but... Your XP is split between all three, so as I said, you get 300 XP. But that means yeah, but... each of your class, your multi class into gets 100 each. Yeah, you'll be more versatile, but you'll be less powerful. It doesn't work like that this here, so you could just uh, level your main thing mostly and just take 
one side thing for access to say like rogue sneak attacks i believe we already can we we can do sneak attacks as a ranger if we go into the uh, deep wood stalker line also i opened this with control and r as a shortcut you can't spend points in here but you can check things out so you don't need to go find a trainer yeah. yeah. Actually, I would say if you were to spec into all three different classes, you're not only slightly weaker, even though you make it more versatile, you also level up so much slower. Yeah. Okay. Advance to the next level as a fighter. Are you certain? Uh, oh, but it's a. I've been playing a fighter recently. Uh, that is why. why you... I was wondering wonder since you brought the bootyclass up if you were climbing to multi-class the ranger. Oh, oh okay, that, that I didn't actually notice. But it seems that you can access your enhancements from any trainer. That is something I didn't know. <laughs> Learn something every day, huh? Uh, there's the trainer. But yeah, there are some classes that have really useful stuff early on. And uh, I don't specifically know which. I haven't really multiclassed in DDO before, but I'd probably make a bard or something that will, since bards are already very versatile and they can use uh, extra <coughs> extra help in some things. I don't okay. trust you as a bard. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you were to take one of the archetypes, it would give you the option to just level up and it will decide for you. But since we went customize, we get to choose ourselves. You also just you also get the option to just customize even if you have taken an archetype, in case you want to what be more specific. The heck? Ursa yeah. I can translate many of these characters' names. Oh. <laughs> All these the Nordic folks they decide to, just, to just make a settlement on a tropical island? But Maybe. Her last name, if I remember right from Danish, should translate as Iron Sword. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Ursa is a just a shirts. Latin name for bear. Okay. Uh, we don't get a feat or anything. We don't get to pick a feat. But uh, yeah, we get 12 additional HP for 57 total, and not including enhancements and temporary effects. We get two additional spell points, okay, for 22. Why is it showing 10 here then? Uh, our attack, our base attack bonus, just basically, well, our standard chance to hit, went from you know, plus one to two. We've gotten fortitude and reflex increase, and we gained three classes, uh, class feats. Let's see, rapid shot. You can fire ranged attacks faster and reload faster when using a ranged weapon. With long bows and short bows, you also gain ranged power equal to 1.5 your base attack bonus. Okay, I don't fully know what ranged and melee power really are, but I do believe they count in on damage. Then we have two weapon fighting, reduces the penalty for fighting with two weapons, and wilderness lore represents your knowledge of the wilderness. Okay. There we go. We have some more action points, so might as well spend those. Let's see. We need a certain amount of points uh, <clears throat> in the tree entirely before we can choose one, another one of these. And you need levels and the amount of points spent into the tree to get up higher into it. So for now, uh, let's see. Let's just put more points into that. And yeah, there we go. Okay, and I think that'll do as a showcase and test stream, because we've also hit yeah. 10 p.m. Yeah, I know the things actually worked, but I was worried we were to have another disaster. <laughs> okay, uh, but one final th uh, thing for people who might be watching this to try and get some insight on DDO. Uh, just one clarification, like I said at the start, yeah, uh, you can. You can only have one effect, uh, one effect of each active at once. Uh, one, one of the same effects that is. So, if, for example, if I had something that gave vitality plus three, uh, and also had this thing equipped, which gives uh, extra hit points, it would only count the strongest of them. So only the vitality plus three would be calculated into things. So it would. I would only have 
plus three HP uh, when I would have this and another uh, a plus three vitality item equipped. That is the yeah, that, that is the best description or and yeah, that is the best and most base uh, description of uh, yeah how effects do not stack in this. There are, there are di many different ways to get bonuses to specific things, like through the with a, <clears throat> uh, with armor class, for example, you can get enhancement bonuses to it. You can get natural armor bonuses, and you can get uh, did, did I say deflection already? I uh, yeah, just as long as you have separate origins or different types of bonuses for something, they will stack. But if you have two of the same, so two deflection bonuses, they will not stack on top of each other. One will cancel out the other. All right. Oh, dear. And with that, let's log out. And yeah, this is... You have multiple servers on DDO as well. And since I have bought stuff, I have a premium account, not a VIP account. So I can make five characters on each of these different servers. You can also move serv characters around servers, but that re requires payment, of course, since this is a free-to-play game. But yeah, my, as I said before, my main character is a level nine rogue, uh, but they are on a different server. For now, though, let's head on over here. No, stream Deck. There we go. I'll exit the game. And we can go look for someone to raid. Let's see. I won't be raid... Pizza Lover's Fridge. I think that's what? like the fourth time you've said that. I don't think I ever suggested to raid Pizza Lover's Fridge. No, there's a lot of people online. Uh, let's see, let me narrow this down. The place is muted, yes. I always mute it beforehand, but I always double check just in case. <clears throat> this is good. Let's see, Derpy Doo is playing Terraria. I see we've raided them recently. The Mental Marsupial, haven't been seen them in a while. They're streaming Zombotron. Let's have a look. Uh... Okay, to the. Uh, what the heck? Okay, they have a new avatar. <laughs> uh, a marsupial in a space marine armor. What the heck? Let's see. Then we have Azra Arcane, who is streaming Diablo 4, which has recently been reviewed uh, bombed because, well, Blizzard got a blizzard and they've nerfed a bunch of stuff, basically making the game worse. Not for balancing, not... they just made everything worse to try and force people to the cash shop. Yeah. Yeah, they're becoming more and more self sabotage. Like, they forgot why they made games, and then also, I feel like them team up with Activision just made things worse. Yeah. And then we have Cider and Delish, who is streaming Genshin Impact. And yeah, there are over 10 people streaming so i will have to cut it down this time <laughs> I'm, I'm i might make this more of a common thing that i just narrow things down to three and but if you see any one specific that you'd like to raid instead you can just uh, ask that one but yeah between these cider azra and mentor marsupial who would you say to raid uh mentor marsupial because <laughs> That was a sight. Do Azure Arcade was also a sight? Just I'm surprised Twitch are not attacking her at the moment. That avatar, <laughs> well, there isn't actual nudity show. Ba basic to give a short description, they ba she basically put up a new 3D avatar that is uh, just entirely shadow body, no clothes on that. <laughs> but I yeah, think since... you can do better description a Barbie without no clothes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But yeah, at the absolute least, the stream side of this test went well. I will I will see if the recording side of it went as planned. Though I don't yeah. think uh, there should be any issues on that unless there's some last second uh, conversion issue or something. Yeah. 
like basically the double shaking here with the how the quarterback is basically but the deciding factor if this is a good idea or not yeah because if i can split the audio you know, if i can have the audio play separately that means i can edit out audio issues a lot easier for the youtube videos yeah no, i'm still surprised last time we playing doom no single issue when we play the game that is we had issues before starting but not with the game itself yeah that was more discord being dumb with the mic so yeah may maybe yeah. it's because of the the graphics have changed i'm not really going to say lowered or anything but maybe also could have been a part that i had the, the graphics at medium from the start i think also is this is a thing I recall people say they loved 2006 one, but they do recall there was a lot of bugs and, and uh, other technical issues at times. So I would not be surprised if Doom Eternal had a lot of... Like, they, they listened to the feedbacks, double-checked, and when they made it, they tried to make it as polished as possible even more. Yeah, it could also be. For now, though, before we start the raids, thank you everyone who has been watching now or later. Thank in the order that I'm seeing here. Thank you, Random Marco. Thank you, Guacamole. And was there anyone else? Uh, pizza pizza lover, lover, of course. <laughs> that my memory is shit as always. So pardon for that. And, and Inky, an Oscar. <laughs> okay. And, and of course, thank you, Drakir. You're welcome as always, my friend. And with that, we'll start the raids. And tomorrow, we will be streaming more Doom Eternal, unless something comes up, of course. Always going to put a disclaimer. And, well, the weekend, we'll have the weekend stuff with uh, <clears throat> our side games, Evo Land and Dave the Diver, and the Showcase Sunday, of course. Yeah, and maybe even more Dave the Diver or uh, L.A. Noir. Yeah. But for now, thank you all again for watching, and until next time, have a nice day, and until then. Be safe, everyone, and watch out for zombie seagulls and uh, Sahagen. <laughs> Sahagen. I, I'm never Sahagen. going to... It's a it's difficult a... name. It's a dumb name. Uh, until then. Be safe.